Welcome. This is going to be a short discussion of the Houses of Parliament located in Westminster Palace as part of the politics and participation for Paper 1, Section B of the GCSE Citizenship course. So here we have a layout of the Houses of uh, Parliament and it's broken into these different sections. So you can see the Houses of Parliament or the UK Parliament is bicameral, which means it's made up of two different houses, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Both are involved in legal processes and any law, any legislation, any act or bill will bounce back and forth between the two until it's finally decided upon and becomes law. Any institution where there's only one house that makes decisions is called a unicameral. Now, the two houses, we've got the House of Commons here on the left, which is green, and the House of Lords on the right, which is red. You also have this side area here, which is for the Queen. So this allows the Queen to robe and prepare as she enters Parliament. It is connected to the House of Lords because the Queen is only allowed into the House of Lords. She's not allowed into the House of Commons. In the House of Commons, the government will sit to the right of the Speaker, or as we tend to see on telly, it's the left-hand side of the, the Parliament. And opposite them is the opposition. So this is often made up of the opposing party. The government is made up of the group political party that has power. The opposition is a combination of other political parties or the second largest party, and they generally become the opposition. The prime minister will sit at the front here and opposite him will or her will sit the leader of the opposition. On these spaces next to the prime minister and leader of opposition, you have what we call the, the ministers. So you have the cabinet ministers for the prime minister. They are the ones who run the government are key figures in government. On the opposition side, you have the shadow cabinet. So they're kind of understudies, the people who are also keeping them in check and would potentially step into their role if there's a change of government. These people at the front are called the front benches and people at the back are back benches. Now, the House of Commons is made up of 20, 650 MPs. They make up Parliament. But Parliament itself is only designed to sit 427 MPs, give or take one or two. Now, the reason this is important is because you will often see a group of MPs standing at the back or either side of the speaker at the very um, sort of front of the House of Commons. Now, if you want to raise a point of interest or ask a question or raise something in a debate, you need to be sitting in a chair. And that's really important because the speaker will not address anyone standing to speak during debates. You'll also notice these red lines on the floor in the House of Commons. Now these red lines are there, um, obviously they, they act as a, a kind of divider between the two sides, but it's also, they're designed to be just over two metres apart, so no opposing members of government can have a sword fight in the middle of the debate. Now the Speaker sits at the very front of the House of Commons, so he's looking out to the government on his right and the opposition on his left. Either side of him, there will be two deputy speakers, basically ready to step into the speaker's role if he is unavailable. And often these deputies will come from either side of the political party, so the government and the opposition. On the boxes, uh, uh, sorry, on the table in front of the prime minister and opposition are the dispatches boxes. These boxes here, which are used to present and discuss and debate. You'll also see this royal mace on the table. This is to symbolise the power of the monarchy, because as I said earlier, the Queen is not allowed to enter the Houses of Commons. It's also important that this mace remains on the table because this makes any debate legal. Without the mace there, the debate is illegal. In 2019, a Labour MP, frustrated by the way a debate was going, removed the mace from its position in order to make that debate illegal. And this has happened on a few occasions throughout history. At the back, to the sort of right of the speaker, you will have the sergeant at arms. So this is the security for the House of Commons and often the person who will bring in the royal mace and take the royal mace away. Just outside of the House of Commons, there are the MP pigeonholes where messages are laid. And then just at the back, sitting above the House of the Parliament, sorry, the House of Commons, is the public gallery where members of the public and press can sit to watch a debate. In the House of Lords, we also have a speaker who sits and presides over the debate. The House of Lords is substantially bigger. It's made up of about 800 members. Um, they're often lifelong memberships. 
You do get hereditary peers where their lord title has been passed down from their parents or fathers or mothers. And you also have bishops who take on the role of lord bishops. There's about 26 of these in the House of Lords. There's also another public gallery. So again, people can sit in the House of Lords and watch the debates take place there. And the security uh, is provided by the Black Rod who stands to the side of the speaker. They are the one who will travel along this corridor between the Lords and Parliament to summon MPs or the Prime Minister into the House of Lords to deal with addresses. In the House of Lords, there's a seat for the Queen right in front of the speaker. So that's her position when she leads and signs off on laws. And also as the Queen passes into the House of Lords, there's a copy of the Magna Carta. So again, that's the early laws set into uh, this country and again it was kind of where we started to see the origins of parliament take place so all people are treated equally before the law